You probably have heard about the Stanford Prison Experiment, which is quite a known example of how not to do research. If you haven't, feel free to watch my video in which I describe that experiment. Uh, today, however, I want to talk about a different example, a little bit less known example of how not to do research. Uh, this one, however, is equally hardcore and wrong. Uh, this is uh, the study was officially called uh, Peace Project and unofficially a sex raft. So what was Peace Project about? Uh, the idea originated out of quite altruistic motivation. It was uh, it originated in 1973 by uh, a Mexican anthropologist by the name of Santiago Genove. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. And what he wanted to achieve, uh, he wanted to achieve world peace, which is, like I said, altruistic motivation, nothing wrong with that. Uh, he wanted to understand violence and achieve world peace. And he wanted specifically to test a hy uh, hypothesis that uh, he developed as a result of observation of m uh, monkeys, uh, namely that uh, violence always originates from some sexual tensions, tension, uh, sex drive, and tension between males who are uh, competing over females. Again, although the hypothesis may sound a little bit far-fetched, nothing wrong with that so far. However, the first red flag is how uh, he developed the research design, the so-called research design idea, and this happened when he was on the way back from a conference on history of violence. He was flying, he was on a plane, and the plane got hijacked. And under these uh, conditions, in these uh, circumstances of extreme anxiety and stress, he observed people's reactions, people who were desperate to get home, be get back home to their families. Uh, and then later he concluded that these were the ideal conditions in which we may observe human behavior, because there is this extreme stress and anxiety and people are really desperate. This is when they show who they really are. So, uh, so he decided he wants to replicate these conditions in his study. So just imagine that, uh, just let that sink in and imagine uh, developing a study where you intentionally want to expose people to extreme stress and possible life threat situation because you want to observe them. So needless to say, nowadays you probably wouldn't be that successful with that, uh, with that study application. But it was 1973, everything was of course different, everything was easier. Uh, so we can what happened as a result we can call it the first version of Love Island or Big Brother only much more hardcore So now on to the design of that study. He decided to put 11 people uh, of mixed race mixed gender I believe it was five uh, females and six males plus Santiago uh, coming from different uh, different uh, backgrounds national backgrounds a variety of people he decided to put them on a raft and uh, set, set to sail across the Atlantic for 101 days. He believed in these uh, conditions of extreme isolation, uh, males would eventually start to compete over females and fight and, and there will be all kinds of tension and sex, of course, so and violence. So that's uh, ideal, uh, these are ideal conditions in his, in his mind to really explore and understand human behavior. So like I said, the sample included a variety of people from different backgrounds, uh, I'll give him that. So he wanted to see, he didn't want just to focus on, on one race and one type of people. However, it was extremely biased because the way he chose, he selected these people was basically, he chose people he, uh, who he thought were attractive. So that was his his idea. They they were supposed to be attractive because of course there needs to be that sexual tension. So Santiago basically picked people he believed to be attractive. Uh, again, as as you can imagine, not the best way to recruit participants or not not the most rigorous sampling uh, technique. Another thing is that these people who agreed to participate they didn't really know what's going to happen. They really didn't. He he was really vague about the whole study, he said he wants to explore, he wants to bring about world peace, he wants to understand human behavior. Uh, he del deliberately lied to some of these people, apparently. So, for example, the photographer who was there, uh, he thought he was there for a, for a task of being a photographer. So, so that was his job. He, he thought he was just going to take pictures, whereas he was actually a participant. He didn't know that. And he was one of these people who uh, Santiago found attractive. So just imagine how, how creepy uh, this was. There was also a woman who just managed to escape uh, an abusive relationship, abusive husband, 
Uh, so she has some really traumatic experiences and imagine being put on a raft where the researcher is actually hoping that some kind of orgy of sex and violence is about to break out. So again, everything is wrong about this study from the very initial stages. They did sign some kind of a contract, uh, which of course was extremely uh, vague. Nobody really knew what was uh, about to happen. The raft did not have any motor, nothing like that. It was just, uh, just gonna sail with the wind, more or less. Uh, there was nobody on board who can actually navigate. So, so this was again in Santiago's mind that was perfect because it, it's supposed to be dangerous. So, so remember, this whole idea is based on on this life-threatening environment. So now regarding the the research procedures, uh, every day Santiago would pass around this this questionnaire with with all these weird and and extremely biased and uncomfortable questions. So basically things like who do you like or who annoys you most or if you were to pick one person uh, to get rid of who would that be so so all these weird extremely weird questions uh, somehow uh, every time he was disappointed with the responses because the participants seemed to be quite okay with each other nobody really hated each other uh, quite contrary they they really enjoyed the experience from the very beginning they enjoyed the experience uh, they were relaxing uh, on the raft, reading books, and then he banned books. So he decided that since you're having fun reading books, I don't need books. I want you to be stressed. No more books. So that's uh, that's what he did. He then uh, started to add more and more uh, uncomfortable and weirder and, and weirder and creepier questions to the questionnaire. Uh, so he would start to ask about sex, who do you want to have sex with, and, and things like that. He would uh, later start to stage uh, these moments of tension, because guess what he did? He started to reveal the answers to the participants. So basically he would gather them and say, look, he's got a crush on you, or he thinks you're annoying and she thinks you should go. So, so he was really hoping, he, he was growing desperate because he couldn't see any tension on that raft. Uh, this whole idea, this whole hypothesis that uh, uh, that the males would start to uh, almost kill each other over the females clearly didn't work out. So he started to stage these moments. He would start to whisper some stuff into people's ears at night, uh, again, sharing the, uh, the different secrets. So do all kinds of stuff just to make sure that they start to fight each other. However, they always manage to work these things out among themselves. Uh, to the annoyance of Santiago. Another thing he did, uh, he put uh, women in charge of uh, positions of power on the raft. So there was a female captain, for example, because he hoped that, again, this would really annoy men on that raft, because how in 1970s, how is a woman uh, supposed to be to have this authority over men. Again, however, nobody apart from Santiago seemed to care about this. Nobody seemed bothered. There was a situation, however, where uh, something broke, a minor repair underwater just below the surface was needed. And what happened is that Santiago decided that he needs to repair that because women are not gonna do that, they are not gonna handle it. So he was actually really annoyed with his own decision to put women in charge. What happened, however, he almost drowned because he was not trained. There was a, a, a trained diver, scuba diver, and it was a woman on that raft, but he was not okay with that idea. So he decided to take matters into his own hands, almost drowned, and then was rescued. He was not happy, however, his ego was clearly hurt, and he was the only person on that raft that couldn't accept the idea of females being in power or, or being in charge. And from there it only got from bad to worse. Uh, th this group of people was really friendly, they were really enjoying the experience. He was uh, desperately trying to annoy them and to bring about some kind of conflicts, resorting to such things as throwing buckets of water into their faces. <laughs> but they were still managing, they were still willing to overcome all conflicts. Then again, there was the problem of women in charge. So at some point, Maria, who was uh, the captain, uh, decided that they need to turn around because they were heading into a dangerous tropical storm but he was uh, stubborn, he didn't want to listen to her, so, so he stripped her of uh, her captaincy and decided to continue. Eventually they managed to somehow uh, avoid death or avoid uh, some, some potentially dangerous situations 
and continued. But there was another situation where this time Santiago was in charge already of the ship, he became a captain. There was another situation when they were heading on a collision course with a large container ship and Santiago didn't manage, he panicked and Maria regained control of the raft and saved everybody. So of course these situations just resulted in more bond between uh, the passengers and what happened is that Santiago after this he really withdrew withdrew to his cabin and uh, spent the rest of the of the trip of the the experience in his cabin uh, basically lying down and and crying like a baby or reflecting on what went wrong at that point he did realize that he's probably the only person who's causing a problem so that's that's a good thing uh, however what started to happen on deck, on the board of that raft is quite concerning because at that point uh, this crew or the group of participants started to plot uh, murder. How to murder, how to get rid of Santiago. The most popular idea was to push him overboard, uh, although there were also other ideas such as to drag him with the available medicine. I'm not sure why this happened, I think it was uh, probably obviously the extreme uh, conditions and stress and anxiety, people wanting to go back home and understanding that he's not gonna let that happen essentially. So, so I think that's where the idea developed. It was also his idea because another criterion when he was recruiting the participants, he was trying to make sure that everybody has a good reason, a desperate reason to go home. He wanted them to be desperate and in these conditions, as you remember, he wanted that violence uh, to break out. However, of course, he did not predict that he will be the object of that violence. Fortunately, nothing serious happened. Nobody died on that raft. The project ended. Unfortunately for Santiago, uh, his university, of course, pulled out the funding uh, because they were growing uh, more and more concerned about this idea of a sex raft because that's what everybody was talking about in the media. There was indeed sex on that raft. Uh, so, so it wasn't a successful a research project for Santiago. So that's how the whole research project ended. Uh, I'm not sure what we learned from it apart from uh, how not to do research, that's for sure. And also just having this uh, really interesting and ironic story in which this guy who wanted to implement that feminist approach, which was something new for 1970s for sure, actually turned out uh, to be the only person who was not ready to accept uh, powerful women. And I also think that uh, it can be argued that this project actually reveals a good side of, of us, of human nature, because try as he might, he could not force people uh, to act in a violent way. So, so actually they were very willing to resort, uh, to resolve, uh, solve their problems in a peaceful way. So this is something that definitely gives hope. This, however, cannot be uh, said about the other project, uh, the other famous research study, Stanford Prison Experiment, where people actually showed extreme violence and all kind of negative and concerning behavior. So here is that video, uh, feel free to watch it. In that video I talk about this one and also Milgram's experiment, which is another really messed up experiment. 